this past Saturday at UFC 280, UFC 284 got a lot of love. Despite being over three and a half months away, fans are pumped up about what could be the main event, and that's Islam Makashev versus Alexander Volkanovsky. Again, not official confirmation, but almost as official as unofficial can get. So, guys, uh, the endorsement already came from Dana White. Like I said, it looks like Perth, Australia, February. These two could mix it up. Now that you've seen them kind of head-to-head, are you into this fight? And, uh, yeah, Volkanovsky's attempt at champ champ status. Are you feeling it? What are your early leans? Nolan, we're all ears. Go. Yeah, I mean, I'm obviously interested. I think as much as we criticize sometimes the matchmaking that comes with super fights or the timing or whatever, like when it comes time to watch two champions fight each other, who's going to say no to that? Who's not going to be excited? Who's not going to be intrigued? No one. Everybody's going to be into it. So I'm amongst that. I'm, I'm among those people that are interested. I uh, thought that the face-off was really interesting. I think the size difference, sure, it's always going to be a, a thing when you've got somebody moving up in weight. To, to, to challenge for a second title, you're always going to question the size. But I think particularly with this matchup, uh, both in height and just in, in build within itself, uh, I think it's going to be really interesting. Um, and yeah, I mean, matchup wise, I've been running it through my head and it's it's a tough one. It's uh, I feel like it's a weirdly big jump from 145 to 155, even though it's only 10 pounds. I think uh, trying to do the MMA math in my head, I kind of broke my brain. But I am going to lean with Islam Makashev just because maybe it's a little bit of recency bias, but... I just think that uh, that heavy top game, that strong wrestling is going to be very interesting for Alexander Volkanovsky to deal with, like trying to get a, a bigger body that's really good at that, uh, that's, that style in that weight class off of him as his first challenge at lightweight. That just seems to me maybe a, just a tad too much for him to overcome. All right. And Mike, let me ask you this. Usually, you know, we've been in the sport for a while. This was usually reserved for a champ who's cleared out of the division versus champ who's cleared out of the division. All right, let's go. Now, in this case, like you said, Makashev's had this incredible streak and he just beat a guy that had kind of cleared the division. So does he get a pass? Are you are you warm to this matchup? I am. And I, th- I love the way that you frame that because it's. This is not about Islam Makachev, the reason this fight is happening. It's because of Alexander Volkanovsky, right? Like what he has done in that featherweight division, he has earned that opportunity. When he just did what he did to Max Holloway in that third fight, we were like, okay, like he's clearly head and shoulders above everyone in this division. Max Holloway showed he's the clear number one guy and, you know, destroying the uh, Yair Rodriguez. Maybe he didn't destroy Yair, but you know what I'm saying? He's beaten all these guys and proved that, you know, he is a clear step here and that Volkanovski proved he's way up here. So am I really interested in seeing him Yair beat, fight Yair Rodriguez, who's on like a one fight streak against a guy who popped his shoulder out? Josh Emmett, who's coming off an extremely controversial decision. If Arnold Allen looks spectacular this weekend, maybe that changes the conversation a little bit. And if he defeats Calvin Cater, he would be on a nice run of his own with like nine or 10 straight wins in the UFC. But for the most part, the featherweight division isn't super intriguing right now. And Volkanovsky has done the work to earn this chance. Uh, He, as a champion, which I believe has never happened before, came in as the backup, made weight, was ready to fight both those guys. Like he did all the things he's needed to do to get this opportunity to be a dual champion. So this is more about him than it is against Makachev. Yeah, you could do Makachev against like the winner of Poirier and Chandler or whoever else out there, Dariush. Um, You could do that, but I think this is kind of more Volkanovsky's moment that he's earned. So I like the fight there. I think it's pretty fascinating. As I said earlier in the show, I think the betting odds on this, even though Makachev is a pretty sizable favorite to start, are closer than it would be if he was fighting any other lightweight contender right now. So, yeah, I think this is a great fight. You know, only the seventh time in UFC history, there would be a champion versus champion fight. In the previous six, the guy from the lower weight class is one three. The guy from the higher weight class is one three. So this is good stuff. I mean, it'll be just the second fight in UFC history with guys with double digit winning streaks fighting each other. We just saw the first in Makachev versus Oliveira. So this is great. I love this fight, and um, I'm very much excited for it. There you go. All right, goes finish things off here. Volkanovski, Makachev. You saw him face off. Little bit of a difference, but then hey. Peter Yan and uh, O'Malley had that type of a difference, and it didn't seem to matter too much. Man, I love Alexander Volkanovsky. He's one of my favorite fighters to watch. I think he's one of those people where if I had a son and I was going to tell them, uh, here's somebody to look up to, it would be Alexander Volkanovsky. But I have zero interest in watching this fight. At, at 155, I mean, Alexander Volkanovsky is one of the smaller 145s. We've seen what happens when a 145 goes up 
in fights at 155 with Max Holloway. That didn't, it just, it didn't feel like we were looking at the same fighter. It really just seemed like the size mattered in that fight. I don't want to see that happen again. There's what about people, when McGregor moved up and fought Alvarez? Yeah, but it's a different body type, man. Like uh, right now, I just, you saw them standing next to each other. I mean, it was look, it looked like he could be a skeleton or something, dude. Like they just didn't seem to be on the same wavelength. wavelength. And what happens if he wins? We're all bitching about the divisions being held up. What if he wins? You think <laughs> divisions are going to be held up then? It's going to be even worse. What is the point in doing this? I really don't understand. I'm not saying it can't ever happen. It just doesn't need to happen now. Makachev has been champ for, what, 24 hours? Give the guy a break. You're already giving him a champ from another division? Like, there's people like Benil Darius that's just right there that would be a, a good fight. And I understand money, money, money. I get it. But at some point, your sport has to make some sense, right? It's got to make some sense. You, you you can't tell fighters, go out there and win, do this, say that, do that, and not give them title shots. I just think it's it's a bad idea. I don't know if it's going to be a, a great – I'm not saying that Volkanovski can't win the fight. I just think it, it just doesn't need to happen. <laughs>